Oh, what is going on, everybody? Hey. It is Pixbarters here, and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney. When we left off, we're getting into all the courty things now, because we got our the, we got the judge scales to go flip flop, and then we do more witness testimonies, and, and now we're getting down to falling for the prosecutor again, uh, to the surprise of no one. Yeah. But now I forgot to remember we got to see if we can prove that there's someone else there, and I don't know if I can do that, but uh. Hmm. Actually, not idea. slowly. It's going pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do I have a good idea who it could be? I blame your voice, Evan. Do I know who's saying the witness's blind spot? I mean, uh, I'm going to say it because I have no idea. Because if I look at the court record, so there were four people according to... Was it four people overall? Yeah. So we had Adam up top. And Oscar up top. We had Beppo the driver. Poor Beppo. We have our victim. And then we have Cosney McGundle. We don't really know of a fifth person yet. This is what we're trying to figure out, unless we're saying that's one of them, but who could have done it? Because like I think to the fair to a to play a fair point, I don't think Oscar killed him. I think it's the fact that he's just kind of like, you know what? If he's dead, my debts are gone. Or if uh, if he's in jail, if, if he's in jail, my debts are gone. So he has nothing. To, yeah, he wouldn't really have a reason to murder the other guy. So he wanted to take his money. So yeah. But I think for right now we have to say that we don't know because I can't think of a. Single well, I mean, he would also be dead, but you know, he would be good in. In jail, technically. Yeah. yeah. Well, he get the death penalty. That's right. Death penalty, yeah. which ends up in like no jail, just death penalty. Yeah. You're, you're you're hung instantly. All right. So I'm gonna say I do not know because I don't know who was sitting there. It's no good. I just don't have a clue. What happens if you like steal something? Do you get hanged for that too? I don't think it's like, that. There's, there's I, I guess that's jail, jail somewhere. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think it's just that for something as severe as you know, yeah. murder. Just no, you don't do time before you get executed. You just go. Yeah. So and, long as you stand here as a Japanese man, there are times when you simply must press on, whether you think you can or not. Right? Well, I mean, I guess I can't really say no. <laughs> uh, all right, I get it. Look. Press onward. <laughs> The defense like to present that person's net. Okay, we're 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 doing it. Okay. He's pouring more wine. How preposterous! Such is the stopgap response of one who does not know his standing. Well, know the weight of the obligation you have just placed upon yourself. Well, the court requests an answer from the defense. Oh, okay, there's a chance for the counterattack I've been waiting for. On that night when the crime took place, the person I believe was sitting in the blind spot is, well, actually, this has to be our argument, is that Magundo must be the one in the blind spot and that the murderer was in the seat that was next to the victim. That's what like I'm we were, thinking. Yeah, because I, th I think we thought that thing before because we swear that Magundo said before that he was on the opposite side of the yeah. carriage waking up and seeing him. Which meant that he wasn't beside him. We've just kind of lost track of that because everyone's talking about him being beside him. I never so. lost track of it once. I, I just forget things. So I, I think we just have to present. There we go. The passenger the two sitting on the rooftop overlooked must have been Cosney McGundle. Cosney McGundle, but but he's defending himself. Everyone's confused. Yeah. Oh, he didn't Whoa. like that. <laughs> How impudent of me to shatter the holy grail in the halls of justice. I plead for your forgiveness. L Lord Van Zeex. To think I would believe that your tiny overseas nation possessed what we call civilization. Wow. It appears that I overestimated you. <laughs> what are you trying to say? I shall tell you one civilized exchange student knows nothing of logic. Logic. At the time of the incident, the defendant was sitting next to the victim. The witnesses have testified as such. Is this not the premise of the entire case? It could very well be that the premise itself is wrong. What's this now? If we assume that Mr. Mergunda was next to the victim at the time of the incident, then an unresolvable contradiction arises. A contradiction? 
These are defendants' leather gloves. Mm hmm. These two witnesses unanimously testified to the following. The culprit sitting next to the victim had bloodstains on both his hands. However, the truth is that there was only blood on one glove. The importance being, when confronted with this evidence, their testimony did not change. Their testimony didn't change? Were you listening, Judge? Yes, even now, these two witnesses still claim to clearly remember blood on both hands. Therefore, that memory is the truth. That's how we must look at it. An unknown third party was sitting next to the victim. What's more, blood must have, must have stained both of their hands. You're wearing gloves. You look kind of sus right now. <laughs> and just who do you suppose this third party is? The true culprit, of course. What? The, the true culprit? Ooh, this music. I like it. Order, order, order. This is absolutely... The defense's claims entirely baseless. God, that pose. The witnesses <laughs> testifies that they distinctly saw the defendant. However, Mr. Fairplay also said this in his testimony. Because both of them were wearing hats, I was able to make out their faces. But, right. I wasn't able to pos I wasn't possible to see their faces from the skylight. Yes, they were both indeed wearing hats. As I had to, I pay much attention to people's hats. Not your own, apparently. <laughs> In that case, what kind of hats were the two people wearing? I suppose I happen to forget. What happened to you being a hatter, huh? In any case, it is impossible the third party was inside the coach. And how can you assert that so confidently? If that person did happen to exist, that offended caused him a gundle should have said so himself. Hmm. And perhaps you intend to claim that... Even the defendant himself overlooked the true culprit inside the coach. Yes, because he was hiding. Gah. That's my thought. The only thing that throws it off is that Magunda was sitting on the place where he would have been hiding. Yeah. Which does throw that for a tiny bit of a loop, but he could have knocked right. him out. <laughs> There's a third person inside the omnibus. It's difficult to believe that Mr. Magunda wouldn't have known. <clears throat> Order. The court believes that there's a very simple way to find the answer to this question. And I presume that would be to request the testimony of Cosme McGundle himself? Yeah, we haven't really heard his testimony. Yes, what is the prosecution's opinion on this matter? Naturally, I'm opposed. Because you're afraid you might lose. <laughs> Your reason being? A suspect should report everything he knows to the police upon interrogation. But it's possible that there's something which Mr. McGundle didn't mention. Cosme McGundle's a league apart from those foolish small-time scoundrels. Duh! Were he to have concealed any information, then he would have had some reason for doing so. Hmm. What is the defense's opinion? Well, my lord. Should I ask for Mr. McGonagall's testimony? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. In order, in order to know the truth behind this murder, we need to hear what he has to say. <laughs> he can raise it. The defense asserts that we must hear the defendant's testimony. Hmm. I believe we should hear what these six jurors have to say as well. But, well, I was just in the middle of thinking about it. I would like to hear what Mr. McGundle has to say. And I guess you have to? I've been dragging that guy out here. Thinking about it logically, we must hear his testimony. Well, we have to go out of the way, that's the law of the guild. I'd love to hear from the man who funded such a beautiful part. <laughs> That's what we all want to hear from him. In that case, the court will request testimony from the defendant. Bailiff, bring him to the stand immediately. Oh boy. This is it. Hmm. What really happened that night? It just might become clear soon enough. Hopefully. Hopefully, we still don't really know who a suspect is. No. Now the trial is to resume. Defendant, have you been listening to the trial thus far? I actually kind of forgot his voice because it's been so long. He's I know a goblin it's that high. voice. I was also thinking 
like we haven't met anyone that's a potential suspect yet in no. this case. Like there's no one extra that stands out as like super sus. Yeah. There's only one other Unfortunately, he stands out as super sus. He does unfortunately. Look at that face. Yeah. But and I we there is no motive, but there's one person that potentially could be our next best culprit. Who? Beppo. What? Think about it. He's the driver. He could have locked the cabin. He's the one that took extra pence. I don't know. But it's definitely... It wasn't Beppo. Well, it's definitely not these two. Have you seen Beppo? Yeah. He wouldn't be able to accurately aim a knife. Well, you know... He would hit the seat next to the guy. I mean, it, it, he is more likely than Oscar Fairplay and Adam Lady first. Watch and then we have no one first. else. Dude, that would be... I mean, he hasn't really played any crazy part in this. Yet. Apprentice Milner. Okay, anyways. Do you, do, you, do you need to look up his voice real quick? Of course, me Lord! That was not that. <laughs> not like that. It was but... not that. Of course, me Lord! That, it wasn't that either. What was it then? We need to... He, he's a defendant. This is important. Ah, crap. Hang on. <laughs> All right. I think I've got it unless I immediately forget, which I might do. But anyways, we're back. Did you already say the seek two questions? I don't think I did. We seek the answer to two questions. First, does this so-called third party in the Omnibus really exist? Nope. And second, if this person does exist, why did you withhold this information from the authorities? Dear me, how impressive you all are! I can't hide anything from you! What is the meaning of this witness? The contrast of these voices! <laughs> <laughs> to tell you the truth, I have been unsure whether to mention it or not. Mr. Gundle. Well, it's just as a good barrister says. It's true that there was another person inside the omnibus that night. What? There was a third passenger. And let the passenger escape from the crime scene. Uh. What? What? Uh, what, what? Ow. I love the what. <laughs> what? Uh, you, what? <laughs> He's not happy. Mm. It's too late for such a weak excuse, Cosney McGundle. I'm really, really sorry, Lord Bag von Zeeks. I all waited until the police as soon as I was arrested. Honestly speaking, my reason for doing so may be a bit questionable. And that reason was... I don't want to get innocent youth involved in this incident. What's this? The police knew of her presence. She would surely be suspected, arrested, and maybe even brought to court. I wanted to keep that from happening. One can't wound the hearts of the youth when they have the whole future ahead of them, right? Then, who is this innocent youth you speak of? He's like, well, if I told you... Well, I wouldn't know. Yeah, oh. <laughs> you wouldn't know. After all, I met her, I met her by chance in the omnibus that night. There's not a single reason for us to trust this man's fairy tales. The prosecution asserts the defendant's remarks are not worth listening to. Perhaps this young lady is, even now, watching over my trial from the audience of this courtroom. Huh? Uh. Uh. uh smoke. Was that? Is someone gonna catch you? A signal? What? What's going on? Narahoda, we're in danger. Get down close to the ground. But if the defendant escapes, secure the omnibus. The court declares an emergency recess. The bailiffs will capture the defendant and assist in evacuating the courtroom. Uh oh. Jesus. We were then forced out of the courtroom by the bailiffs. They were willing to get out first, then it descended to mayhem. As they tried to figure out what was going on, the trial was momentarily suspended. Uh-oh. Uh, he looked over to the left. He and did. And that was like a signal. <laughs> it was. It's like it's like he knew they were there. And then, bang. And now, um, I guess we'll see how this He's takes. in cahoots with somebody. Apparently. Like, it's obvious. And if he's not, I'm surprised. What 
the hell is going on? You're supposed to be you're supposed to be the good guy, Cosney. Yeah. What on earth just happened? Naruto, I think I have a grasp of the situation. Susano! It appears that a very potent smoke grenade was detonated. Smoke grenade? Like those smoke bombs ninjas use? They are terrifying. They are terrifying. <laughs> they are verifying the safety of the court now. Preparations to resume the trial are underway. Just who would do something like that? Someone attempting to escape from the crown court was captured by the bailiff. Attempting to escape? Well, that's one way to put it. Indeed, it was a young girl about 15 years of age. A young girl? Could that be the third pasture Mr. McGunnell was talking about? I believe so, too. I knew it. the third party really did exist. Whatever happened to Mr. McGundle? There's so much I have to ask him, but he hasn't returned to this lobby. Seems he was summoned by the prosecutor's office to be pressed for information. That young girl is accompanying him as well. Just who is she? And why did she come to this trial in the first place? She don't be risky, and I doubt there was anything to gain from doing so. I also have one issue I am curious of. What would that be? It's the 20 pence. Huh? Why? According to what that coachman Beppo has testified. On that night, the fee was at 5 pence per person with 4 passengers on the ride. So the total is 20 pence. The sum matches up perfectly. However, here we have a fifth customer appearing. Once again, the sum of 20 makes no sense. Huh. That really is strange. Now turn the head to the crowd! Preparation trial will resume in complete. It will resume in five minutes. We got it. I'll let her immediately. In any case, I believe that this girl will take the witness stand. I assume that the contents of her testimony will determine the outcome of this trial. Shall we go in, Susado? No, let's stay out here, you dumbass. We're going <laughs> in, of course. Let's. <laughs> Okay, what is going on? 18th February, 1 p.m., Old Bailey, Crown Court. Who is that? I assume that's her, but who exactly is her? That young girl next to Mr. McGundle. Looks like she's the one who caused that ruckus earlier. Now, then, the court's back in session for the trial of Cosney McGundle. Lord Van Zix. Yes, my lord. Uh, could you please explain the origin of that strange smoke from earlier? We believe that a military grade smoke grenade was detonated. Military here. grade? <laughs> military grade? But why is that being used here? The one who attempted to slip out of the courthouse through the smoke has been caught. The copper stands right there. Hmm. Miss, state your name. Were you the one behind the confusion caused by the smoke grenade earlier? Why in heaven's name did you do that? Excuse me, may I add, Lord Judge? What is it, defendant? It might be better for me to prove, provide the explanation. In regards to why this girl here is why she tried to escape. Everything was related to what transpired on the night of the incident, really. Hmm. Very well then, court orders the defendant to testify. Speak in regard to this incident and its relation to this young girl. Hmm. I wonder what exactly happened during the incident that night. If only I could have heard about all of it before the trial started. God. All right. A relation to the crime. That night I had seated myself in the back seat inside the coach. I had not left to sleep. Sometime later, I was woken up by an abrupt, loud sound accompanied by a small scream. In front of my eyes laid a man. I helped him up and sat him on the seat. They were trembling with shock and investigated the area where the scream had come from. To my surprise, there was a young girl hidden there, curled and tight and quiet as a mouse. Wait, what? 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 Not sure if I completely understand, but essentially that young girl... She was riding the omnibus when the crime occurred. You are correct, as the good bastard said it earlier. There was indeed a fifth passenger on that omnibus.
Very well. It appears it's about time to hear the attorney's cross-examination, then. Attorney, are you prepared? Uh, <laughs> yes, my lord. I think. <laughs> Judge expects me to clear this up. But I have absolutely <laughs> no idea what is going on here. God damn it, Ryu! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, that face! <laughs> Then I had seated myself on the back seat inside the coach. There, I nodded off to sleep. I don't think that I'll ever sense. get used to that face. <laughs> Sometime later, I was awoken up by an abrupt, loud sound accompanied by a small scream. When my eyes laid a man, I helped him up and sat him on the seat. So he was on the ground, and then he helped him up and put him on the seat. I turned with shock, I investigated the area where the scream had come from. I was surprised there was a young girl hidden there, curled up tight and quiet as a mouse. But that makes it seem like if she was hiding, you'd think that would mean that he'd found her, like, in that seat compartment. Yeah. But wasn't that on the other... That, that was on the other side where Mr. McGundal was sitting. That was on the back side of the coach. Uh-huh. What the fuck? I mean, everything was reversed, but that wouldn't make sense. Oh, God. Okay, we're going to go to the beginning and press it. All right, so you're in the back seat of the coach. They're not asleep. When you got onto the omnibus, was anyone else on board? No, no one else was on the coach, nor up on the rooftop seats. In other words, the defendant was the first passenger. Indeed, I was merely sitting comfortably on the back seat inside the omnibus. By back seats, do you mean... Why, as you yourself uh, so expertly pointed out just now, my good master, I mean the seats directly across from where the gentleman who sat in stop was sitting. It was the most comfortable spot for me, you see. After all, you can't be seen through the skylight from there. <sighs> All right. Sometime later, I was woken up by an abrupt loud sound. Company. Okay, describe this. What the hell? Yeah, do you, what the hell do you mean sound? by a loud sound? A loud noise and a scream. It was. Uh, yes, it was quite a remarkable thud. I believe it was much like the sound of a man falling over. Yeah. It must have been the sound of the victim, Mister Mortar, falling over after being stabbed. I was asleep at the time, you see, so if I can't say for sure, therefore, furthermore, when I woke, not another soul did I see in the coach, save for that gentleman lying on the floor before me. There was no one else in there. Yet at the time, you said you heard a scream, right? Hmm, perhaps that scream arose from the rooftop seating area. No, I heard the scream from inside the coach. However, at the moment, the scream was the least of my worries. For you see, I could hardly believe what I saw before my own eyes. Run my eyes like the man. Help him up and sound on the seats. Y you set the victim up on the seat? Yes, sir. On the seat right across from me. I'd realize he was dead, you see. If I know it would be disrespectful, it would be disrespectful to put the poor soul on the floor like that. <laughs> After all, I am a sympathetic man, you know. Quite a curious story, defendant. Well, now, whatever might you mean, Prosecutor Van Zeeks? If a dead man dropped before his very eyes, the same person would call the coachman at once. Were they, were they an average principal of London, that is? Hmm. As you well know, I hold a rather blind profession. You're referring to your business as a salary lender, correct? <laughs> to he to who, there's no <laughs> there are those who would borrow money from me only to be ungrateful and set out to kill me. So the last thing I want to do is we get wrapped up in such a nasty affair. But then, you were just going to leave the victim's body like that? Heavens me, of course not. I hadn't intended to report the innocent to the police. I simply wished to show the circumstances were crystal clear before doing so. The circumstances? Indeed, I thought it a good idea beforehand to investigate anything that struck me as strange. Like where the faint scream I heard really came from, for instance. That would strike anyone as strange, wouldn't you say? The scream he heard alongside the victim falling down, huh? <laughs> Trembling with shock, investigated the area with the scream. So, I mean, if it's, it's so weird. Excuse me, but what do you mean by that? Correct me if I'm wrong, but weren't you and the victim the only ones in the coach? Mm. Correct at first glance, in any case. At first glance? What does that even mean? <laughs> Yes, indeed. Imagine my shock when I heard that tiny little scream. And it came from directly beneath my rear. Yep. What in the... But, but beneath your rear? Right then and there, I lifted up the seat cushion. 
As it turned out, under the seat was a trunk. Naruto, we can take a look at the omnibus too. Come to think of it, it was submitted into evidence, right? Maybe now would be a good time to give it another good look. Anyway, after that, I went ahead and peeked inside the trunk. I guess we'll go ahead and take a look. Yeah. Why is the young girl hidden there, curled up tight and quiet as a mess? All right, number one, uh, I don't want to present it, but I do want to look at the omnibus. Step inside. Even though we already looked in it, the game's like, hey, look in it again. Yeah, well, it also said take another look, so maybe we'll, uh... Hello. Open sesame. Mm. All right, open, and let's take a look at what's in there. No, you have to do the handle. You did the seat. Oh, whoops. There we go. There's a handle attached to the seat. Whoop. The trunk seems to be empty. There's nothing inside at all. What is this feeling in the back of my mind? Yeah, that was not empty earlier. Yeah, no. Uh, well, I... uh... What happened during that smoke? I was about to say that... The trunk seems to be empty. Hmm. Okay. What if I do it again? Huh. Weird. Very, very weird. Yeah. Because before there were supplies huh. in there. There were. Huh. Okay. We'll press this. That's odd. She was hiding in the trunk? Yes, indeed, and that's what I saw. When I came, when I caught sight of her cowering there, in the dim light of the lamp. But I surely thought that my heart was going to stop. Something about all this seems really off. Yes. I didn't really dragged her out of there. Then I sat her on the seat opposite me, intent on hearing what she has to say. The seat opposite you? Next to the dead guy. Yes, right next to the dead chap who was yeah. already occupying a spot. You see this young lady right next to the victim's corpse? As I believe I mentioned earlier, to the nature of my work, much to my dismay, I have crosshairs trained on me. Therefore, it is of the utmost importance for me to learn just who exactly this girl was. Hmm. But then, as I was speaking with her, I heard a gentleman scream overhead. That must have been the two passengers on the roof, I suppose. Indeed, that is what I am led to believe. That like I saw the stab gent lined up next to what appeared to be the young girl. So you're saying what the two on the roof saw was not you, but instead they saw the victim sitting next to this young lady? That is exactly right. Because you see, I was seated in the back, which cannot be seen from the skylight. And she's wearing a hat. Yeah, but, but still. Hmm. I see. The defendant does have a somewhat compact physique. Suppose it isn't a stretch that this is a girl could have been mistaken for him. That was when. Departing the gentleman scream from the roof, and the coachman stopped the omnibus. Enough. The situation is now perfectly clear. However, we now have a fundamental question. Just who exactly is this girl? It's Nicomina. <laughs> her name is Gina Lestrade. Gina Lestrade. <laughs> she Gina hides Lestrade. in places where people gather, then pounces out, pounces out and steals their wallets. She's what you would call a pickpocket. I was going to say, she looks like a pickpocket. Oh, what? She's got a thief vibe uh, to yeah. her. This little girl is a pickpocket. She's got the thief pose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like in video games? Oh, I know exactly what you mean. Order, order. Do you take issue with this claim, Miss Lestrade? Miss Lestrade, answer me at once. Oh, God. Oh, ah! my God. Oh, she just murdered a judge. He heavens, what in blazes are you? Ah! The girl just disappeared. I'm guessing that's her. I would assume so. <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> if you're looking for me, I'm right here. Uh, what, when did you get over there? Was there any point in to looking to like who? that? To hate to who? 
and I know all about what your adults are thinking. This dirty Maldrula Mal messed up and got caught on the job. She went mental and stabbed the other bloke. That ain't right. Or ain't that right? <laughs> That's not true. God, this is a place where we seek the truth. We want to make sure. Oh, don't shoot me. <laughs> oh. uh. He just stands there. Don't forget that I'm a pro. My whole livelihood is depending on these quick fingers. Only cowards use knives. Pickpocket's pride won't stand for it. I like her. Well, that's not how they ought to use that thing filled with smoke, right? This gov picked this up from a bag at the omnibus station the other day. Pretty little thing, don't you think? I think I like me. <laughs> I think I like me a bit of pink. <laughs> don't take that at me. It looks oh, like something shit. that Sherlock <laughs> would have. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's just like, where the hell did I leave my gun? <laughs> <laughs> Where's my smoke bomb gun? <laughs> Where's my smoke bomb gun? So, you were riding in the omnibus then? <laughs> that, that sassy look. That sassy face oh is gonna God. have to sit there for 23 and a half more oh hours until God. next time. I love Gina. She is amazing I love already. Her so much. She's just oh out there. She's like, bitch. <laughs> for real. That is amazing. <laughs>